Hello, everyone. I'm David Tannenbaum, Chair of the Guitar Department at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. I'm here to introduce a guitarist who needs no introduction, David Russell. David is deservedly celebrated around the world for the greatness of his playing and his teaching, and also for the, his wonderful presence in our field. And he was doing his annual winter spring tour of the United States when the world started to shut down. He and his wife, Maria, raced back to Spain, sort of chasing away from an encroaching eclipse, you could say. And they made it in time. But we had a masterclass scheduled on March 18th with him. And of course, we had to cancel that. But Hank Mao, who works at the conservatory, had the idea that maybe we could do it online. The show must go online. So we're presenting that masterclass now. Thanks to Hank and his team, Kelly Coyne, Andrew Ross, Jason O'Connell. Thanks to the support of the Tiny Dorm series from Harry Winston. And I'm here now to introduce to you a bearded, a Corona bearded, David Russell. Hi, David. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for doing this, David. My pleasure. Can you see me? I can't see you. I can see you now, yes. Okay. So we'll be starting with videos, the, a video of the first student, Baptiste Domus.
How are you? How are you, so? Very good. Congratulations. Fantastic. Wonderful playing. So, um, this is a really difficult piece, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, when, when, I, when I played this, when I first did it, it was a major challenge. And I think I learned a whole lot of things about my own playing when I did that, really, when I made the transcription and, and worked on it. And one of the first things that really I wanted the piece, a piece that I could really use the cross string trills. Right. So we'll work a little bit to hopefully improve them because there are so many in the, in the overture that, um, you know, they, they make or break the piece. Right. The other thing that I'm hearing, for just, just to go over some general things when you play, I, I heard it on my big computer and it, it sounded much better than here, t this time, the video. So the tone quality is difficult to judge, but um, I would say aim at having a more regular volume of sound. You don't need to go up and down so much, although we can't resist it, but you know, it was written for an instrument that didn't have changes of volume. Now that doesn't mean that we have to imitate the harpsichord or anything, but the trills are the loud bits, you know, on the harpsichord when they play, the, especially if you do a double trill, that's actually a lot louder than the part that has no, no trill. So we can use the trills to, to make volume, right? I, I, we'll go through in detail and I'll get you to play some parts, but now one big thing about the presto, uh, I want you to think a lot about the articulation. It's, uh, it's, it, it's not tight enough in the rhythm. I think for it to improve, to be better, the rhythm has to be tighter. Now, it's a little bit too close to triplets. You know, if you think of... See, they are triplets. So I would suggest that you slow it down just a little bit, because at, at your speed, um, to, to make it sound, sound like a dotted quarter note. Uh, it's really quite difficult to get. But you need, it needs to be tighter. Now, and, and try to at least get away from the triplet, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Now, the ne next thing is uh, to make it sound energetic, like it's like really got a vital strength, the cuts make a big difference. You see, if you do this, So it's cha -cha -cha -cha, as, as tight as you can. Now, I have to say, when, when, I, when I played this first, I was 25 or something like that, and I really didn't know that much about Baroque interpretation. I was guessing at it. And I listened especially, I had, a, had a, uh, an LP of, um, of uh, Kenneth Gilbert playing this, harpsichordist. And uh, so, I imitated some of his articulation, and that's really, it made a big difference for me. Okay, now let's go from the very beginning. All right. So, play, play the start again, you do it. Do I try, like, same volume? Well, just not so much up and down, you know, just not dead flat, not flat, no. It's, of course, we, our guitar can do more in that that the harpsichord can't do. They, they can beat us at some things, but we can do that. So we're going to use our possibilities. But, for example, in the trills, it should be more even. Uh, and not, not, not going towards the end, but a similar sound. You have a go. Off you go. Okay, let's do that. 
let's let's do that do that do that again because I think still before before you go into the trill, just compare the difference. You did this, right? Listen to this. Um, sorry. So you can you can make the chord not. Not so plaque. Not. I think it's too. Uh, it's not grand enough when you simply play it loud. You know, it, it means you have to play it so so strong. Whereas we can spread it. And actually, I, I know it's the, uh, in the publication. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Add in that note. Do this one. You get one more. So D D D F. And then the D, and the D with num with second finger. Yep. Are, are they going to arrest you? <laughs> what? But. Yes. Watch this. One on the F. Two on the D. Four on the D. Okay. You just get a bigger chord. Now, do I play the A? No. No. The A will hurt. Okay. I think that sounds a better chord already. Let's go on now. Okay, now there's some little tricks that we can do here. Uh, that upbeat A, uh, this one. When you go A, dun, 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 the A is too strong, and it's it's dominating too much when I hear you. And also, um, I wrote that down when I listened to your video. So it sounds like chord, and then it's too much. Now, if if you think of what we had before, the full chord is louder than a single note. So on the harpsichord, it's already going to be a quieter A. Whereas on the guitar, because we have one note, we play a big apoyando on it. It just bounces out. So you have chord, then quiet. Okay, and don't make it too long. I know, I know it's it's written as a quarter note, but make it a, a, a prelude to the trill, not and then trill. It is. You understand? Have a go. Okay, now there's one more thing before we leave this first bit, because it's, it's a very beautiful intro into the piece. Now, your trill finishes, and then the bass scale starts. Now, obviously, on our instrument, we have to kind of, we, we can't do it all together. Like, but, uh, see if you can put, well, this is still ring. See? Uh, leave the F on, and now we start this. So that they integrate, because you're getting trill, and then the next bit. It's separate. I want it to join. It's one statement. Have a go. Okay. But if, listen how late you started your scale. Listen to mine. See, I, I finished my trill. And I hit the D straight away. Try to get them to belong to us. You know, it doesn't have to be metronomic. It just has to belong together. Like shorter? I have to like go straight at it? As soon as you finish the trill, because we, we finish it probably with your thumb, get down and play the bass. So now they're together, and that that will apply to the next bar as well, you know. So so that the trill is not a separate entity. Your your version was. 
so that they're they're separate. We want to try to join them together so you have trill. You understood? Okay, we don't need you I know you can deal with that one. Let's move forward. Um da -da -da. You know the bar, it's bar one, two, on bar three you have this bit, that bit, could you play that? Okay. Um, I kept that dotted, I know it's written undotted, but many harpsichordists, at least when I was playing this, and, and if you get a chance to listen to Kenneth Gilbert, um, you will hear that they play like this. Um, instead of they play. Yeah. Now, some some harpsichordists and some and it's also some do it exactly as it's written. What worries me is when I hear you, is that the undotted feeling is too square. This is too solid. It's at least a... And we don't, we don't hear that almost. It's there, but it's, we're really listening to that. Okay. So... You understand? So, just try it, do it dotting, but quietly. Yeah, I go. Mm. Try that, experiment with it. And I obviously have my prejudices because I've played the piece for years. And so I prefer it dotting because I decided to do it that way. But of course, you, if you do it without dotting, Make sure you don't lose the top. See, if you do this and make the dot, it's too strong. Okay? Let's move forward. Um, now, at the end of the next bar, I know we've only got four bars done, but uh, this way you'll, you'll find more details. Um, could you do the, the bar four? Sure. You play? I used to play the bass note with my left hand. Watch this. Can you see my hand? Oh, yeah. See? So it's really it's so that you can finish the trill on a beat. So that beat, right? Well, you understand? Uh, I do something for that. Uh, I do like uh, I finish, finish the beat. Oh, But make make the when you do that uh, like that sorry like that finishing on the eye. First of all, the trill might not be long enough for that moment. But the other thing is, uh, play the D on that moment. Sorry. So that the D isn't has it, it, the D has a has a, a moment in time. If you finish the trill powerfully, like this, that's the moment the D is too late. So that's why I was doing it, because that's quite a long trill and I was just using the left hand. To do shorter ones, I'd do your way, where you... Okay? Yeah. You, you decide, but see if you can fix that. Let's move forward, there's lots of other things to talk about. Um, and you you play from play on from there. Uh, you're giving more importance to the scale than to the arrival. The scale is is just to take us to that chord. The chord has to be better. And so the ornament you're putting on the chord is not working well enough. Just do the chord with the ornament, the M A minor chord. Um, 
Yeah, and you were doing an ornament, yes, with it? Yes. How were you, could you? Yeah. See, the, the important is that last C, it goes CBC, and it shouldn't sound like CBC. It should sound like CBC. You understand? The, the, the final part is that last C. That's the, that's the moment the chord becomes what it is. I would prefer in this case, because it's a it's a difficult ornament to bring out loud enough, to play the last one again. So I'd go your scale. So so after your scale, and don't don't make the scale too loud. Just just trick the scale is like you know the flamenco, they sometimes go they just do something and it just so the chord is not just suddenly happening. So scale and so that way that last C is loud enough. Try, try that, see if it will work for you. Like that? Yes, something like that. You you experiment, see if you can you can make that work, yeah? At least, are you strumming the chord? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to sound... Um, just, just pluck it, see if you can get the... Rather than the thumb, the thumb's a bit clumsy, you know, it's... Uh, fingers are more agile, more delicate, yeah? You, you practice it, let's continue, let's continue. Um, let's jump forward to, to bar nine. Where that scale happens, and nine, ten, and eleven. Could you do that that little bit? Could you play it? Okay, uh, that that bit but just now and also in your video, it sounds kind of slow and careful. <laughs> It's, it doesn't sound gutsy, I, uh, you know, I think it's maybe behind speed, you know, I think you're it, not not because of the metronome, it just feels slow, right? So, first of all, I, I changed the fingering for that scale. So, because you can get the three finger scales going like this, three fingers. Oh. So, when you, so, because those scales should actually start from slow to fast. So it's easier to go. So make sure that the, the, the basic pulse isn't you're not behind there. And if anything, push it a little bit. Go from escape. You, your way. Don't take the fingering today. Try it another day. Yeah. It's a little bit not generous enough in the way so after the last one where it goes uh, Can you not get two twiddles in there? Rather than yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit too small, that one. I, th I mean, a little bit more would be better. Yeah. One more thing. Uh, you can use the, your articulation here. Uh, so, little cuts, so that we don't hear... Yeah? Let's move forward. Okay, because I know you can fix that. Yeah. Uh, can you go from there? From the F, from number 12? Yeah, maybe maybe the, the final trill could have one more reiteration. Uh, It's a little bit too short 
just to go do do do. It's not enough notes, so it's it hasn't become a trill. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to do it today. Just a, a small thing. Uh, uh, this is not to do with the, the playing. When you when I ask you to start again, this is a general thing which you must try in your practice. Almost always, you play a note two three times. You do this. Just those two. Get rid of that habit. <laughs> you know, it's like think, play. Try to get to, try, in your practice. I mean, it doesn't matter today, but in your practice in general, rub that out because it's it's a bit like you know trying to start your motorbike. <laughs> uh, you want to think, play. It'll help you. <laughs> okay. So we went from. How long is this trill? That one should be longer. I think you did quite a short one on it. Now, so the, the bottom bit, the lower notes, the, you can do them with the left hand. Watch. Yeah. Okay. Let's move. Let's let's move forward, uh, Baptiste, because I, I want to do some in the in the presto with you. Yeah. So go from. Uh, where's a good place? Go from the. Uh, right on it. Might as well go right on it. Off you go. Okay. Let's 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 make up a mind. I, I can give you the one the articulation that I think is right. You know. When we're trying to do something vaguely the same volume, so the accents are made by our, our by the silences before the important notes. So, um, uh, and that D, that this one, is longer, so it has more power. Uh, So I'm looking for the one that I want to give more power to, right? So have a go. Just just experiment. Doesn't really matter what happens. <laughs> a little slower. That is, now, but you don't need to accent it, you don't need to go, you don't need to play it louder, because we are making it louder by it being longer, and by the silence, the silences before it, and so it makes our playing less lumpy, <laughs> you know, more even, it'll be better, okay? Now, uh, just, just a general thing, uh, I think this, this has real power, this, this music, if your rhythm is even, if it gets a little faster, it gets a bit slower, it gets, it's not so fun to listen to. You know, we can hear the discomfort. Now, you can use the thing of making one like slightly heavier, or you know, maybe slightly slower. You know, the one that goes uh, and then it goes, uh, it gets more and more notes each time somewhere down there. Um, well, that one. Okay, so if it gets a little bit heavier, that's okay, you know, but, but generally, you really want to be on the beat with it, okay? So, you play, and I'll, I won't stop you for a bit. Have a go. Okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's try. Uh, we just talk about it, because... Uh, you're trying to do your staccato, or staccato, you're trying to do it with the left hand. Yeah. The, right hand is, the right hand is much cleaner. You know, when you do staccatos on the left hand, there's always a little bit of muck on the end of the note. So if it's slow, you won't be able to hear this on the zoom thing, but you know, if you do this, okay, so. that's fine, it's fine. You can do it with the left hand. Because as, the, as the note finishes, it's quite nice, nicely. But if you have, you have that. Cuts the nose and much cleaner. So, 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 so,
like a new thing for you or something we haven't used. So, something to work at. Yeah, I'm right hand, I don't know if I'm doing the left hand. Take this time. Yeah, like, yeah. It's going to be much more difficult as it comes. You know, it's, it's really a lot that you're not going to be able to do it with full chord. It's not possible. Yeah, but with, I was doing it on the right hand this time. Yes, I okay. I forgot about it. I won't write it on the left hand. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. Let's, let, shall we jump forward? Um, so go from there, uh, bar 31, 32. See how the articulation makes it feel rhythmically tighter. Yeah, you have a go from from. Okay, beautiful. Now. The articulation is going to help you with one one more thing. You know how sometimes when you've got little position changes and like if you maybe have or sometimes if you don't articulate, if you don't make a silence between those notes, we can hear you move. We hear the little, yeah, you know, you hear the the little slide. It's not it's not very good for this music. So the right hand articulation. Anywhere that you hear those slides, maybe use the articulation to get rid of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it's really worth it because this piece has these huge, big, difficult things, you know. Let's jump forward to the um, that high bit. Um... <laughs> that stuff there? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's bar, around the way, bar 43. All right. Okay, careful with, careful with that. You see, the fact that Handel has given you many more notes, that already makes it louder when you go, when you have the basses. So you don't need to play them bigger. Right? Um, just just to round off the ending, I think it's nice with a trill, but that's my choice. Um, it's not something of like that, you know. Whatever, uh, just just right at the end of it. Uh, Just seems it seems too too dry just to go. Oh. I prefer it. I prefer to have the trill. Uh, you know, they didn't always write them in, but it's up to you. You know, you don't have to do it. If Handel didn't write it in, but you know, and in the in the publication I did, yeah. If there's no trill there, it's because the original I had had no trill in it. But he, he used them and it yeah. feels better. Yeah. Great. So oh, well, there was one little bit, uh, bar 63, 64, 65. Again, it's those dotted things. It's in that little uh, interlude. Now, so after you do this bit, if you don't dot them, make it feel uh, not so the the in between note, every second eighth note, much quieter. Not this is too is too much like much later music. So it would be better to go right. So loud, soft. Loud, soft, loud, soft. 
And actually there, I would put it. I would put an ornament in. Just, just to finish off, um, on your when you do your trills here, they're sounding better. Actually, you know they're sounding fine. Um, just work at making sure that the thumb isn't too loud, because it's it's naturally comes out louder. So when you do the trills, um, the, this thing of ending loud, is not so good. Uh, try to end off gently. Make sure, I can't tell from here, but make sure that it doesn't have a fatter sound. Many people have, you know, a thinner sound with the fingers and then when the thumb plays, the, the tone quality is, it's, is rounder. So even if the volume is the same, that note has yeah. too much body. So you have to make sure that you file your nail in such a way that you can get a very similar sound. So, so they're more even, if possible. Any questions you would like to ask? Um, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, congratulations then. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks for thanks for your help. Thank you. Beautiful.
Yeah. Well done. Beautiful. Great. <laughs> lovely. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> Great. Okay, lovely. So I listened to your video before and now again, and uh, that's good playing. Very nice. So just a few general things. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to judge here, but this piece has an awful lot of open E's. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, sound, it sounds a little brittle. Uh, it, you know, it, especially the open E, sometimes on the other notes it's okay because they have more life, but you know, it's something that often happens in 19th century guitar music uh, that, you know, maybe their open E's sounded better than our modern guitars or something. But that was one of the general things. Okay, uh, but still, that you have to be the judge of that because you can hear yourself. Um, and there are a couple of other little things really, but mostly I just want you to, uh, I want to help you uh, bring out the charm in the piece, right? Obviously there's the, uh, the virtuosic parts and things and all of that, but mostly I, I, think, I think you could make it more charming. Right, we have to find ways of doing it. You know, you're you're playing it um, without making big changes. You know, and sometimes, sometimes the the risk of pushing your own personality a little bit is worth it. You know, when you go to concerts, you want to hear someone different, and they're all different. But often we we kind of close down our differences, and maybe if you're playing. Scarlatti or Hanto or something, you don't, your own personality doesn't need to go in so much. But in this kind of music, you really have to fill it with your own personality. So let's work at that, right? Um, there, were, there, was, there were no other big general things, but mostly just this more differences between the sections, but that could be partly because I'm not hearing enough difference. Uh, Sometimes you want to exaggerate things a little bit more or a lot more and so we'll, we'll work at that okay. So why don't we start start right from the beginning, right? And let's see I've got uh, okay. Right, okay off you go you play for us Beautiful. Okay, let, let's, let's, a, few, a few little ideas, because in general it's sounding very nice. But, you know, you do the, the kind of rubato where you hold the first note in, in the very first couple of bars. You're holding the first note, and then you go forward, and then you hold the first note. Sometimes it's not a good idea to do the same rubato in the bass line, and then the same rubato in the top line. I'll okay, show you the meaning. It's like a, kind of a mirroring thing. Yeah, but, but maybe, you know, it would... For example, rubato the first bar. Oh, it's a D. You understand what I mean? It's just let, let the, the upper line move the piece forward and the, the lower line kind of try to hold it back. Just try that as an experiment. Experiment with that, you know. I think I think really the piece could quite happily start slower and end up uh, the first four bars get faster until the um, until that comes. You know, it, it builds better like that. You know, why don't you try just as an experiment again? Try playing. I mean, not half speed, but way slower at the beginning, like this. Hold it back even more than that. Okay. 
I think I think maybe you, you're going to get a more dramatic um, beginning if you work at something like that. That might not be the exact one, you know, but something like that has to happen. When you did it now, you played a proper rubato. Before you were doing the first note long and then the next note's a tempo. It was like... But it's better if it's... So it gets faster, not one long note and then fast notes. Yeah, and now I'm worried about how this sounds. That somehow has to be more enthralling or charming or something. And it's not a great place on our guitar to be beautiful. So after you go... Do something on that moment. You know, that's the moment, that's your chance. Just go from here. Okay. Uh, I've just had an idea because I, I, I played through the piece a bit and they, I don't, personally, I don't like the jump from the bass E to the D. So listen to this. If you put the G up, so we have, um, it, it means that the D itself is much more satisfactory or satisfying musically. And, you know, so we, we, we move the, the, the mess of the jump, the octave jump, to another place. So that that moment that I think we, hopefully is going to sound better. You experiment with it. Let's go to this now. To that stuff, that, that little ornament there. Have you considered doing it up, up the string like this? So, so I, experiment with that because, you know, um, when you have uh, really strong music, like say, uh, well, we, we just had the, the big piece by Handel or something, uh, the small moments are less important. It's the bigger ideas. But when you have this kind of music, the, the small moments of beauty become really important. And each one that you miss or don't do, it's, it's one more lost opportunity, right? So we had this one, so you, is, is an important moment. And then... And that moment there is absolutely vital for, for you to, to express your charm and, you know... If you, you imagine you're a singer, at that, that moment you would... Your voice would do something magic, hopefully. So, when you have to go... Yeah, you can't do anything. So, I would, I would move up, you know. Do, do it right there. It offers more vibrato as well. So it's good. Yeah, and then, then now we can go on now. Because that's really the intro to it. Now we're in major, so we can go on. You play? Can we just experiment with that? Um, so, let, let it fall forward, come back, fall forward, come back. You have a go. Your F is way too late. Mi fa da. You went, uh, and it's sort of like a new, a new thing. It's, it's, it's got to just sneak out of the E. Beautiful, 
that was okay. That was be- that was better. You know, with this, we have to go these tiny little details and just experiment. So, for you, work at that. So that the, and it's a tiny join, but it makes a big difference if you play the F like a new phrase. <laughs> it's it's the E that just becomes a yeah. I'm not right. And then the the next bit is the just do that one. Just play it from bar uh, 19, 18, 17. Yeah. Somehow I can hear you shift from the the G to the B at the end. Uh, uh, it's not a nice join. See if you can make that better. Your your, your G is finishing. I, I don't want. We shouldn't hear it. A little cut, maybe a little cut. That was one way. You know, the other way is. Yeah. Right, because you, the ending, think how you would like it. Listen, I'll try to do it two ways. If I do this, it sounds kind of heavy, but if it goes. If it's going to float in and like almost go too far, so we have, you know, if we imagine we're never exact, which side are of exact are you? If it's slow and heavy, you're on the wrong side. If it's a little bit too fast, you're on the right side in this moment. So you take some time, you steal some time here and you make it up. Now, I know it's a tiny detail, but I want you to practice it, right? Let's, cause it's best if we move forward, right? Because there are some more. But that's, that's another... Think of each of those moments as your opportunity to give, give a little bit of charm to the music. Okay? Yeah. Let, let's move forward, because you, you, you practice it. I'm not sure if I would change the fingering, because... Uh, uh, you can do it there as well. It's no problem. Um, no problem. But the, 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 the feeling of the piece should be... Um, it's like falling forward. And not... Yeah. Let's go forward to... That stuff. Off you go. Again. Oscar, I think I think the audience are going to lose you a little bit in this bar because it's bar nineteen twenty one twenty two. They are somehow it's not sounding. See, I also have a hard time with my left hand from here. Like over here, I'm getting ready for this chord. I have to get onto this this guy. Uh, maybe. Where do you finger it? There. Well, the alternative would be. So you'd only have you'd only have to go down to don't change it today, but you just go down. It, you would only have to go down to fourth position. So it would really be uh, so. Um, can you see that? Much? Um, you're already there. Right, right, right. right. You know, it's, it's, it's surprising. surprising. Want to join 
Right? So make sure that you don't have a position change right in the middle. <laughs> you know, or a, di a difficulty right there. You put the difficulty somewhere else, even if it's extra, extra difficult. Because there are other places that it doesn't really matter if it struggles a little bit. But this... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, um, loose, lost myself, lost myself. Oh, here we go. So... So... These have to be really close, almost too close is better. So struggle here. You understand? Whereas if you have... Yeah, it's too hard. Yeah. And let's move forward, because... It... Yeah, you, you'll fix that. I... Oscar, I want you to go to the bars before, really, because it's... The, for the audience, the problem wasn't so much there, but here... This one. It was there, really. That, that I, I want you to join better. No. Yeah, but you... Oscar, um... Do that one. From here. But you're still late. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. Sorry. Da da dum. No, it's got da da dum. Uh, it, it should be. So you arrive to that chord. That's better. Yeah. Okay. okay. You see. You, wait. Let, let me. Let me exp explain my view as to why you must do that. If you imagine. You, you know, you you do some rubato in that in that little arpeggio. You you push forward, but then you push forward, hopefully, to take people to the chord. But then, if you put a gap before the chord, you've pushed them into a gap. <laughs> so it's more important that you reach the chord in time. And if you're not reaching it in time, you need to take away the rubato and play it like that. See, that, so you do completely the opposite. Right? It, it would also be very beautiful. Listen to this. Uh, let's see. Uh... Also, you could do that. But your way was to push. So that's why the chord has to be, if anything, in front of the beat, never behind. Yeah. Let's, let's move forward, right? You know, I, I, think of it, I think of it very much almost like physical movement. You know, so if we do this, there is a... It's like your hand isn't statically, it's going, it gets faster, gets faster, and then at the end it goes like that, and the chord, whoom, right? But if you go, whoom, whoom, no, it doesn't work. It's ungraceful. You understand what I mean? So think of it as a, as a musical gesture, and that's why the chord is the end of... That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. Well, shall we move forward? Because there's lots of things to do, and I want to help you with more things. Um, Jump, 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 jump. Okay, yeah, something that... That stuff there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Let, let's, just, let's just talk about that a little bit there. Use some articulation. All of them you're doing uh, long, short, long, long. They all sound like from here anyway. But sometimes it should be. Um, see, so some should actually have cut big. You see, the, the beat two, you got the audience on the beat, so the off beat becomes important. Uh, and then this one. And don't be afraid that, like, when you want to be extra dramatic, play late. Watch this, let's see if I can do it. This one. That's the wrong chord. Okay. So that second note is 
way late, but it has some tension. You know, everyone knows it's there, but it feels more difficult. You know, it, it feels musically tense. Whereas if you play it just like, it just sounds loud. It, it's lost all its power. So can you go back to there? You know the note, so go. And just put in some cuts, just experiment. Just, just because I, you know, you, I want you to experiment with it. It's, it. Think of it not as if the the first note is staccato, because if you do this, it's actually way too slow, too short. Sorry, that first one. Um, it's too short. It's, so it's still because you want to be like big heavy notes. So it's still long, but it's got a cut in between it. It's not. You see how smooth this sounds and these chords. They have no power, um, so the the cut is still. It's not super sharp, not bad. It's okay. Let's move forward, because <laughs> I want you to okay go from the quite a major but the the uh, That's it. Okay. Just look. sorry, Oscar. You see that open E after you want uh, that open E there on that phrase. That one from here anyway. It sounds very bright and un uncharming. Uh, you know when you had uh, uh, this one. Yeah. Do some work on it to get it as, as rounded and as com. You know, um, I can't, I can't see your right hand, but um, because see, see if you can just tip it just a little. Okay, now just when you hit that E, play with much more angle. See, so yeah, you, if your normal stroke is, uh, so this would be normal stroke, and you just stroke the string more, move down it. You try. Let's try one more thing. Play the E super quiet. Like, suggest it's going to be loud and then play it super quiet. See if it works. Yeah, that, yeah, it, it, that didn't, that wasn't convincing from here. But it should be, that note is, is the one that we're being taken to. And so hopefully it's, it's actually the most beautiful note. And it's that's what, I, what that's what I meant earlier about those open E's kind of not really helping the piece. And I said at the beginning, it's notes like that. Let's just move forward because there's lots of lots more stuff, right? Um, go from da -da 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 that stuff. Beautiful. Oscar, yeah, th here, this, this part you played beautifully. I would just say, if your vibrato is a little bit more, um, has a little more energy when you get do da 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 you know, uh, it doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be wide, it just to be a little faster. Yeah, it'll help, because your vibrato in general is just a little bit too slow for, for this kind of moment. Yeah, yeah. have a go. See. I don't, can you hear that when I do that? You can hear the vibrato? Yeah, have a go. Okay, great. Oscar, let, let's go to the scherzo now. Do for me that stuff. That's fine. Yeah, the, the, your little scale down is great. The only bit I found not so satisfying is the last one. You know, see, so you have it. So when you have this bit, 
that's that's the end of that's the the final one. It's got to be the best one, <laughs> right? So let's start with that one. It's bar seven. Um, I think it's when I have one. to go from A to the to this chord. My right ah. hand is not very balanced in this. I mean, this. Ah, I see. Because the the I has to repeat. Yeah, and then I have to play the A. Yeah. I mean, I find there, there are a million times that I is going to have to repeat because we can't always kind of find some uh, the perfect combination. And if if you put a am on it, a is going to have to repeat the top note. So you're going to be stuck with it. <laughs> um, I think let's aim first at getting the E with the ornament on it. So we have um, and that one. You see, the way he's written it is really the ornament is between the two notes. So it's not really like a normal mordant. A normal mordant would be. Yeah. Right? Here is one. So the first note, make it long. Try that. You're, you're putting uh, you're putting a slur in there. Uh, okay. Okay. If if it if it helps you to make it, but whatever should happen out of that beginning, uh, which you played very well, the only part I found not satisfying or not didn't didn't make me feel good was the end, the one that we have and and when and when and now that one has got to be the good one. Okay. So let, let's keep going. I know you'll practice it. Um, now there's a whole load of them. Go from the... Uh, no. That stuff there. I think always, always... Oscar, always the first of the notes is longer. Never see if possible. Okay, let's move forward. That's that's fine. That's fine. Great. How about go to the C? But Sounded very good, Oscar. No problem. I thought I'd mark down a little question mark at that point, but I think I think it's just the, all the open E's. Just be careful, and possibly, possibly it's sounding worse to me here than than it really is because of the the, the speakers on the on my little computer. But just just be careful because the open E's. You know, sometimes on an old guitar with gut strings and all of that, the open E actually sounds very charming, and. Um, on our guitars, certain kinds of strings really sound kind of wiry, so I'd be careful. Anyway, so let's move forward, because that's fine, really. Um, let's go to the major section. Drum, da, da, where is it? Ah, oh, wait, there was another little bit. Yeah, you know this bit? Can you do that, that bar? It's bar 62, 3, 4. Or with it comes several times. That's right. Before we go into that bit, just just do the bit that goes. Um... See, just listen. Listen to mine once. I want I want you to listen to how the top note comes. If I get it right, right. <laughs> um... So somehow, when 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 the top this note comes out, that 
something has to happen, you know, musically there should be a little bit of magic in that moment. Whoops. So how'd it go? This kind of a uh, warm feeling to the tones. I'm trying to get this kind of tone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, maybe maybe because you've got to. Well, generally it sounded, it looked a little bit slow. It's difficult to tell from here, but. You know, the, the, you can think of vibrato as also how wide it's going to be. Is it going to be, uh, you know, go what, or is it tight? You know, and um, it's just the wobble on it. You know. Anyway, we will have to stop in a moment. So I just want you to go from. No, pro no problem, really, you know, it's just a place I just marked down a little thing, but, you know, just do the little cadenza at, um, where's it, uh, B107. Um, that stuff there. Well done. So I want you to work on the F that comes at the end of it. Um, how good can you make that F? <laughs> Go from the, la the, ve the last bar. Oscar, just, just, just to round off, I just say what's happening is that you're putting it on your fourth finger and you have to position change and look for that note from an open B. If you've got an open B, put the second finger on or another finger because four, fourth is normally the worst vibrato finger. You know, what you want. Right? And if you do put four on, put the two behind it and you have more control over the vibrato. If, if you want vibrato to help that note, you know, in this period, they often did slide up and down the string. You know, when you look at their fingering, um, Coste, Mertz, and all these guys, they often played it. Let's see, where is that? Like a, you know, it's it. And if you learn to move up and down the string, like we had, if you learn to do that well, you can make it not sound like a whole load of gloop and syrup, <laughs> but actually very, very charming. You know, it's and I think it's. It's a part of their style, really. So I would have probably ended that F moving up. Um, or... Right? Because it helps me helps me take it. All of those notes that come before are all for that F. <laughs> really, the, the, everything is concentrated onto this F and going... And so on. Okay, we better stop there. Thank you very much. Well played. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Great.
Great. Thank you. Okay, I, I've got nobody on my screen. <laughs> oh, no, okay, I've got you now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fantastic, wonderful, yeah. great playing, beautiful. And you look different. <laughs> you change your clothes suddenly. <laughs> oh, James, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> great. Okay, lovely. I love the, the whole thing, the transcription. Is it your transcription? No, it's a transcript by Gerard Apiton. Ah, okay, great. Very good. I didn't look because I only got your score. Just, just the, okay. Have you done? Okay. Fantastical. Okay. Um, so it's going to be just talking about little details, and you know, sometimes the the thing about uh, whether you do an ornament on two strings or one string. Yeah. You know, it's uh, we should maybe discuss it when they come, and I would, I would like to be. Uh, the, the very ending, you know, when you do the, the trill onto the G. Yeah. It's somehow, you know, on most guitars, the A, the A sounds much louder than the G. So, um, so when you go... The A is winning. So um, you have to balance it. Make sure that that note... See, even... You know, because it, so it's it's not it's not really a satisfying G because you you have your big scale. Yes, the A is hurting me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let, shall, shall we shall we do the very ending again? Just um, last couple of bars, whatever you like. Joshua, I, um, I honestly think you should. Your sound is, is too loud, actually. Could maybe even move back from the screen, or if you could turn it back. It's okay, it doesn't matter just now. But I think you should reconsider how you do the end. Um, it, it's not always necessary to start on the upper note. Um, so. It, just try, don't do the ornament, don't go la, so, la, so, just go and reach the G and then trill, just try that. Okay. Yeah, it might, it might work, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of another way, for example, just, just to put a simple ornament. Uh, Something like that, and when when if you do a simple one like that, uh, you can see, and then immediately after, I kill the A, right? Uh, so you you get an ornamented last note, which is what you wanted, but hopefully a satisfying G. <laughs> you understand what I mean, yeah? So you you have to reconsider how you do that one because at the moment the. I don't, I don't think it's as good as all of the rest of your playing. So let's go to the beginning now, yeah? Just, just give us the first phrases and we talk. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's go up to there. Let's go. Let's go up to there. Um, it's, there's a tiny, tiny details, but it's, I want you to think of it all the time. When you do bar two and you go, right? The passage between this and this, it's not clean, because I can hear you. I can hear you move. So use your right hand and go like this. Uh, or whatever speed you play it at. Clean these things. Okay. Let's try. Try. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Wait a sec. Okay. Let, let's add some things now. Just a few little things. Uh, 
uh, when you have the trip the, the triplet that goes uh, let them follow follow they're a little bit too static it's a, it's a, like that 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 number four number four right right Too much. I'm exaggerating. You try. Go from the beginning again. Keep thinking of that. Joshua. Joshua. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, it's going to happen. It's, you just play around with it because it's it's a, has that kind of crisp scarlatti feel when you don't play it dead straight, right? That little movement is good. Now, why don't you try on beat number three? Not, not on every bar, but many many bars. Beat number three, cut it shorter, right? I'll show you what I mean. Uh, This one not. The ones with the ornament, they don't want it. But yeah. see, when you first played, you went. So this E was too long. It went. And it should be. Uh, like more. You use, you know, this is. Imagine your articulation. It's like. It's, you're, you're like, uh, what's it called, a sculptor, and little cuts, little cuts, just some are bigger, some are smaller, but you, you play with the length of the note, you know, how long is it? When we speak, we do it all the time. If I want to say something very important, I say, when we speak, cut, we do it all the time. <laughs> that silence is very different from when we speak, we do it all the time. <laughs> it doesn't work. You understand? So think, think, as, and... It'll, it'll improve your playing a lot because already you play very, very well and I think it will take it to another level. So try that one of cutting beat number three just a little bit and cut it in half. Okay. You try that one. Let's move forward because that trill there that we said about the trill there, but that one sounds very nice. I mean, um, um, you don't need to do it on two. It's not necessary. Those ones sound very good. I wouldn't change that. Um, can you go from the bit that goes? That stuff there. Very nice. Uh, just as an experiment, you know when when the one has the C sharp, uh, when it goes, uh, don't it, it should feel like an accent without playing an accent. Don't actually play it louder because from here it, it sounds almost twice as loud. It sounded like um, it sounds too strong. So you see. If you, if you want to make that note fact sound more important, just make it a little longer and steal from the, next, from the, other, the other one. Just, just, to, just give it time. Don't, don't hit it hard. You know? in, this, in this kind of music, to, to remain elegant, it's better to get rid of the accents. We still play them, but not so strong. Go, go back to the... Um, uh, sorry. F sharp now. Now, so 
I would have cut the first one more than the second one. Okay, and here I think this bit still some time. I was too much, but still a little bit. Yeah. You try. Go back to. It's sounding much better because in, in your video, um, I felt that the, the slow part was not at the level that you're a very, very good player and the fast bit really there, you, you're showing us all your brightness and, and excitement and in the slow part, it didn't have enough of what you're just doing just now. That minute little, little rubatos that really shape the, the music, you know, not in a romantic way, but make it sound super musical. Never, yeah. never let it not be musical, you know, but using these tools, there's one more that you can play with, although you're, you're doing it very well anyway, is whether you roll a chord or you don't roll a chord. It's also like a, like a musical weapon, you know, so you can decide, uh, go back to, you know, to either roll the first one or what would be straight rolled you you decide but don't just let it happen because i'm i'm not sure if you're just doing it naturally which naturally means your fingers do what they want <laughs> you know not our soul sometimes we have to actually say i want to roll this one or i want to roll the other one and you could quite happily do it uh, for example this this that one is even more dissonant. So I would say that one would be good to be rolled. So here we don't we roll the first chord. Here we roll the second one to, to kind of emphasize the the hurt in the F in the dissonance. So you know the, the, the way you use your chords can make it extra. Okay. So Joshua, let's move on, on to the to the next bit, yeah? Because um that stuff there, wherever you like. Right on it is good. Can we go can we go to some details? Okay. It it's a tiny little deal, but it's something that when I, when I do it, I don't like it in myself. So I want to, <laughs> I don't, um, after the fast bit starts, right? And uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, B to A, right? The B to A, I can hear you slide. Uh, yeah. I can hear you do this. Uh, so cut the cut the B. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's the way you practice it a little bit. It doesn't have to be cut a lot. It's just so that we don't hear you move. Okay. You know, because in this kind of music, the movements don't, you know, the slides really hurt, hurt the music. They don't really help it in, in at all. And we want to almost, nobody knows where you are on the fretboard, right? So that, that's the best way. There was another place after that it came out like that. But let's just go on from there, because that, that's perfect now. Go from the, uh, do, 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 um, how is it? Uh, Any way you like, you know. You go on. Bravo, bravo, bravo. 
let's, let's talk just about two tiny details. The one with the ornament. Um, um, can you do that one? Bar 36, 35. You know, sometimes if not with, not to change it, but sometimes if you do uh, ornaments on on two strings, you don't need to do so many. So you don't you could you see uh, it's just three notes. So sometimes uh, so you get the effect of the ornament. See the, the because when when. When Scarlatti did the ornament, that note comes out louder. You go bring, so you have it has an extra extra sparkle to it. And sometimes when when we do it, uh, it doesn't necessarily sound extra nice, you know. Yeah. So that sometimes I do. Um, it's just three notes. I would use my fingering would be um, M A I. Okay. Yeah. Now, Joshua, add to that. Play the A at the end of of the ornament, not at the beginning. See, you're playing. I want you to do this. So it goes E D, and then the A, the bass note, comes in on the last note. Practice that. Practice that because then, then, then your the ornament doesn't blur the rhythm. It doesn't ruin the rhythm, you know. Um, as opposed to now, it's now it's gone. The, which one's the right? The, either the bass was too early or the last D was too late. Now sometimes we have to live with that, but it might be better because when you went here. What happens is that the A is never at, at the end. It should be. It should be there if you want the rhythm to be tight, you know. So it, maybe you should consider doing that on, the, on those moments. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let, let's go on a little bit to the next bit. Um, yeah. Uh, that was great. Yeah. Off, on you go to the. Yeah. Just so we can work in the detail, right? Um, I'm stopping you. I'd love, love to hear you play more, but uh, this way we can get more. The A is very short. Um, is it... Um, can you not leave that A longer? It's, it's just, it's sounding like... It's sounding extra short. I think it should be short, long. It should be, if possible, have a go. Just, just, just play it your way. Then we discuss it some more. I think I think you need to work to get that A to ring through. You know, the the interesting thing is for the A to to go across the beat. That way, it is the, your A is is simply going, uh, and then so so they they're not really joined. It, they they need to join together if possible. Let's go on, like because you can you can fix that uh, that stuff. Very good, but um, um, if you can make your bases, it, it can be like 
tighter because they're a little bit loose. Uh, they sound like that too much. But, and so on. That there, you just have to live. Whatever you do there, that's fine. That's sounding great. It's just the bar before, the end of that bar before. Have a go. Um, uh, one, two, three. You, you do it. Don't, don't worry about the, the, the place that has... Don't worry about that bit. The bar before. Um, listen to mine. So... Tight, tight basses, short basses, if possible. Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. Wait, wait a second, can I just try that? Can I try it? I, I'm not I'm not very keen on that cross the, the cross of string there in the middle is it really messes it up. <laughs> I mean I wonder if you can get here. Um so it would be I think it's worth it. You know, Joshua, uh, I think it's, it's even worth it if you have to lose one bass, like say say the E before it. Um, we, have, um, we have two notes there. But if you only, if you only, if you can't play two, you can play two, of course you can. I mean, I can play it without just reading it. So of course you can play it. I think it's better doing it that way. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Let's jump forward. Um, let's go forward to, you know, we'll, uh, which is bar 50 something, yeah, 60. That bit, uh, the bit, all those slurs are not helping. Um, it's it's not sounding crisp. You know, you, you're such a fast and crisp player. That that little bit there with all the slurs, I think, are not helping. Um, go here, whatever you play there. You know, when we make a transcription, we, we okay. You want to get all these notes, but if if those bass notes, well, middle notes of the chord, uh, if they are making the whole piece sound kind of loose rhythmically or or musically, these these slurs, they don't sound right. Mm. So, at least play them with the right hand. If you can't play them with right hand, only play one bass note. Um, so, but you can play it, if I can play it. Uh, I, I would need to have one slur per eight notes <laughs> would be enough, right? I know a slur is a slur is like a free note. You know, we got, we don't have, I've done it. It's like for free, but you're having too many free notes in that bit. Okay. <laughs> and I would say it's losing its vitality by being slurred, all right? So I'm not sure how I would do it, but I would definitely take out most of them. And at least when you do all the D, C, D, C, D, C, D, C, that bit, only half, uh, only half would be enough. Okay. Let's go, let's go on, all right? So from... Can 
careful. Uh, I need to stop there. Yeah, we need to find another way of you being as musical as you did it there. But that that way of facing sounded sounded too well. Romantic's the wrong word because romantic is actually really nice. But it, I think it has to do with the movement when you did the slow one. Um, if we can hear you move, it it uh, it just sounds out of time, out of the the wrong epoch for me. Right, so I would have preferred you to find another way of using your phrasing. So when you do your echo, you do, do the first one. Just do something else, but never. I never want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Why don't you go, um, uh, see if we can find out, some, some way where you don't have to have, it, it's to do with not only the movement, but the, the tone and the quality of that A sound. We have the, the crisp sound, and then it's too sweet. It should sound like, it should sound like that chord sounds to us, you know, and not not this one, which forces us to play kind of something di different. I mean, it's even worth moving. Um, yeah, that's too hard. Yeah, so you find another way of doing it. Just do it in the first position. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Do from uh, uh, how does it go? That stuff there. When when yeah. the allegro again. You will find a good way because each guitar works differently, right? Okay, beautiful, really. It plays so well. It's, it's really very enjoyable to listen to. Can I, um, there was one little bit I wanted to see if. It sounded really, really excellent, so there's no real. Just just start from there again once, it, once more. I'll, I'll remember where it comes. Great, you know, it's, it's perfect. It was just maybe one of those little slides that it's absolutely perfect. You know the little ornament on bar 82? Uh, yes. How are you doing that? You're going... Um, yeah. yeah. If, if, you could, if you can, you know, if you can get it with the right hand, it's, it's going to spring out in a, in a different way. Um, yeah. Because, you see, when we do this, the first one is loud, and then the other two are quieter. So the ornament is after the beat, you know, and it, it, it smudges the beat. Whereas if you do, we, even even if it's late, it'll sound like the beat, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and so on, you know. I think it's maybe worth considering doing it on, on two strings or that one, because it happens so fast, and it, you know, it, it just... For me, it's not as crisp as the rest of your playing, which is really vital. I enjoy it very much. Sorry, um, the, I have a question. If I do two strings, so what about the fingering of the right hand, like a AMI, is that right? Well, there is, there's a trick to do it, is to slur the FE. Um, so if I did this with a slur, I've got time to put any fingering. And here I would do M-A-I. 
that, that would be my way of, but, and you know, so it would be, or, and that way it's absolutely easy to, to, to flick them, you know, if you, if you have a, a possibility of doing a slur. If you don't, it means that it's a bit cumbersome, you know, you have to make sure that you have uh, maybe the A finger on it, um, A, but still it feels, it's still hard to get it really fast enough if you don't have a slur. So if you have, it's really quite easy. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Great. I think we, we've done all the things that I want to say to you, but really, so I'll just read through what I wrote. What, uh, scales, slurs. Mm. Well, in your video, the, uh, the andante part didn't sound quieter. And I think, you know, Again, we, we can relate it to the harpsichord, which would be what Scarlatti is listening to. Uh, when he's got tico taco tico, you know, all of this stuff happening, it's louder because there's more noise being plucked. And then when you get um, uh, whatever, the, the quiet bit that suddenly comes in. Uh, what that kind of, Cut down the volume. Don't be sweet. Don't don't go fruity. Just just play with the same bright sound. But we need to be quieter because on the guitar we play louder on single notes or on on slow note. You know they come out really big, and then not so loud when we have to go. They come out quieter. So we're kind of it's the opposite to what Scarlatti would have expected a little bit. So I would say try to make sure that. When that comes in after the um, whatever these notes are, right? Cut down. Thin sound is beautiful. You know, keep it keep it thin and, and silvery. It'll be perfect. Okay. okay. Well done. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks. David, thanks for this wonderful teaching so far. We're right. going to take a break of just a, a few minutes now. And we'll be back. Students will be playing music from Stephen Dachin as well as Bach. So we'll see you in just a few. Fantastic.
Okay, welcome back everyone to the second part of the David Russell Masterclass at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music. And now we'll be listening to 19-year-old Sebastian Robles play the fantasy divisions of Stephen Dotson.
So I, I loved you playing and really very nice. And I love to hear the piece again. It's, uh, um, I knew Stephen. He was, when I was a student at the Royal Academy in London, he came in quite often and I played for him quite a few times. And, you know, so it's great. So I actually have, I actually have a score of this, <laughs> but it's, it's not, it's not really, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's his handwriting, but it, it's, it's not actually, it's like a printed, he printed up some of his own handwriting. I've also got the second partita. There. This one is, this one has seen better days, but it's, uh, <laughs> but oh, that, wow. that's, that's Stephen. So, um, he, he was a fantastic person and really is a very funny man and, and, uh, and he, he exaggerated in his gestures and in, in everything. And just to, before we, we go into the piece and I'll try and help you, although you play it very well already. Um, you know, when I was a, a young student at the Royal Academy, I was 16 years old and I'd never played anything atonal. <laughs> so I knew nothing about this. So the first piece I learned because I'd met this man uh, was his first partita. Um, I won't say I hated it, but it's like it was such a struggle <laughs> for me. And but then when I got to know him a little better, it was fantastic. You know, and knowing him made me kind of understand some things that at that age I just had no idea what was going on. And uh, so he was an exciting man, and he he did uh, he did many other things. I don't know if you've seen like his studies and all of those things. Uh, you never seen them? No, I haven't. That, well, there's a whole lot of them. Uh, uh, Twenty studies. They're obviously not for uh, for really high level players, but certainly for young people who maybe want to get a little taste of something a bit atonal or whatever. Well, not atonal, but slightly less uh, consequential. Um, 
this is he's got a lot of stuff anyway so let's go with the piece right i've taken a few notes but most of it is is mostly just details i think his music uh, it tempts us to play aggressively at times and mm -hmm. i feel sometimes you the the aggression is winning in the balance between aggression and charm <laughs> Okay. You know, so yes. I, I don't mean I don't want you to be less aggressive in the aggressive places. I want you to be more charming and more intimate in the other parts. So because there is a there is a balance in, in the piece that I think we can find. And it, it sounds a little bit a little bit dry and angry in general. So I, see, yeah. I would like to balance that and get rid of that. So if somebody heard you just play that. They might think, whoa, that's an angry man. <laughs> okay. But we don't really want that, you know. So we want we want the anger when it's there, but I want you to I want you to be more more charming, whatever, for want of a better word. We'll find ways of doing that. Um just a few general things. Make your vibrato um make it correspond to the uh emotional intention. Like, see, see, in general, you use this slightly slow vibrato, and I don't want you to stop using that, but there are many times that the, the, the chord requires this energy. I mean, Stephen, Stephen was a, a super energetic man, and he all oh, right, big movements, and, uh, and he said things suddenly, and, then, and he often used to say things two times. It was a strange thing. He would say, that was good, that was good, and you say, what would you say again for? But he loved doing that, and... So a lot of his uh, things that maybe sound almost angry, they're not really angry. They're energetic, right? I so see. I want you to find a way of being energetic without the anger coming out. I mean, some queer, yes, but not all the time. So let's go, for, let's go right from the beginning, right? Let's go right back to where it starts. Just give us a beginning again. Sorry, I'm with you now, I wasn't listening. suggestion there right uh, very nice I mean there's nothing wrong with it but of those three uh, you know FE FE and then double FE that, that we have at the end of the this section uh, phrase um, the first one was the loudest and I know it's the, it's the one that's got the bass but I think the, the most the one that is most final is really going to be the, the last I think that one, the last one, so I would have preferred, um, um, and then, and now on. You know, see, because if not, if, if you make this one so big, so that's wrong, um, if you make that one big, these two other guys are kind of redundant. You know, so yeah. could you go from, uh, go from first one, second one, biggest one, and wait for longer than it's written, and then try that. That one's that last one. I want it to be somehow more body in your sound. It's a little bit too harsh. It should be the most satisfying one. We say, "Oh yes," <laughs> you know. So if you're a little bit harsh here, Sebastian, if you're a little bit harsh on that one, the first one, where is it? Uh, okay, and then, and then big and fat, and almost no vibrato on the other ones, and then. They are using the vibrato, everything to make those last ones good. Beautiful. Okay, now, now 
just just on that moment there uh, it, it's just it just helps to make the shape you know of the the from the beginning and then the final and then we start again now when you do this the don't make that vibrato so slow it's it's too high up to be it's, it's too wobbly see so uh, Think, think in terms of this when you do the, just that as a general rule of course it's not always the case but a low down note can have a slow vibrato and as it goes up the octaves it should almost double you know so if you have uh, and then here and here you know and this one <laughs> should be but it's not quite like that but as you go up you need to tighten up the, the vibrato unless it's a very special moment where you want to go and you do something like that, you know, you want to be really limp. But in this case, I don't think you want to be limp. See, the first one is kind of sweet. That's extra sweet. This one, not quite so sweet. Um, on from there, you play. Through the long one, two, three, four, maybe die down, right? So we have um, getting quieter. Right? Like, it's almost like it's a long note, but it can't, if he just does, it just dies too soon. So dying down. Do -do -do. section yeah And Sebastian, uh, that's very nice. So you you can experiment with that to see if it fits your playing. Go from uh, do that one. Do that one. Okay. What's happened? First of all, the slur is not helping. It, you know, it doesn't doesn't really. It, it means that you have one bad note. So, it's a scratchy note. It doesn't help. It doesn't really. If it really was, if you're playing it quiet, no crescendo. Okay, maybe. I would. I would have gone. So you can shape the the whole thing with your plucking the notes. The next thing is just because it's the same thing. The top note at the end, the the A. Sorry, the the, the C. When you get there. It's too late because you go. Um, sorry, uh, so again, you're, you're suggesting it's going to come, and then it doesn't come. <laughs> you know, it, so it needs to go. Uh, so, right. So you get there in time. Is, is sorry, Sebastian. Just just because it's for everybody. This is a very typical guitar thing. Right. We all do that without meaning to it because the hand doesn't want to get back for a full chord and sometimes we simply can't so we have to cheat. But really, if you had no bass notes, you would never have played that C as late. You would have gone, of course, you know, you'd have got there. So it should be like you want it without the bass and then it's better because it's got the bass. Not worse, you understand? Okay, Let, let's go on because you know that I've said a couple of little things there in the but really the beginning it was very nice but I, the idea was um, sometimes it, the thing grows growing okay and then sometimes it dies dying down dying dying down you understand just make it make it evident to the audience you're going one way or you're going the other right 
Okay, let, let's go forward because really there was one detail actually. Play the last bar of that. I don't have bar numbers because it's. I just have. I have just scanned out the score, so I don't okay. know the, the bar numbers. But, um, Neither just, do I. You know, it goes. That stuff, yeah. All of us have a certain discomfort when that bar comes, right? And just just play it once like that. If, if the guitar mine's out of tune, but no, no, instead of this, instead of that, just play it like that. So now listen to your guitar. My guitar speaks so much better like that than that. Mine does. So I would finger it like this. Um, I played this a long time ago. I, I d don't remember what I did because it was a long time. But it would, I would have done this. Where's the chords? Okay. So, and then here, like this, watch, no bar. And then leave one. So, so play, play, the, play those two. And then just... The advantage of that is that your F doesn't die. It, it, sorry, yeah, if your G, it goes, the G rings through to this chord, and you can just get a much nicer join in there. Yeah? Okay, let's move forward, right? So that uh, you don't need to play it, but uh, I was just going to say a couple of little things. Um, uh, do that bit, little bit there at the beginning. Um, and whatever else happens. You play? I can see you can play very fast and it's not a problem. I would like to hear it or I'd like to, you to learn it also without slurs. See, you played... Right, so that's, there's that, that middle note. It goes loud, soft, loud, loud, soft, loud, loud, soft, loud, right? I would have preferred, see, loud, louder, loudest. I think it works better. It's, it's, it has, it has the, uh, it reminds me more of Stephen. <laughs> you know, this is, is very static. It's like, but a bum, but a bum, but a bum. They're, they're kind of similar. Whereas, um, it's going somewhere, going somewhere. I think it's better. Okay. I don't think you don't try to change it just now because it, it, you'll go crazy. But all of those things, if they if they go somewhere, they have much more energy without you having to hit them. Right? You just it just goes forward, whatever the rest of the things. And then that little scale, uh, that one, uh, uh, whatever it is, you played it on two strings. One, two, three, four. It's, well, you know the scale. That part? Yeah. You yeah. play it? Yeah, and it, 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 it sounds fine. I mean, it sounds nice because it, it, but it's a. Uh, um, um, that has much more energy than um, the the the, the kind of, uh, whatever you're doing across the strings, you know. Yeah. And if if you weren't a fast player, you know, if it was giving you problems, that's a great solution, you know. But I can see that you can play very fast without it doesn't cause you major problems. So I think it has more direction like that. It, it it has it, you know the scale your your scale when you do it like that it's like flat it's all it's all on the same level of of energy whereas uh, has has a driving energy to it and I think it's worth consider it to to change to that right um, why do we go why do you go right from the very beginning don't change any fingering don't do, don't do anything I just want to really think about uh, this part that goes and see how how we can make that make that not sound so angry just that that little bit I'm not sure what to do but 
I'll okay. hopefully think of something. <laughs> just thought of another little thing which we need to talk about but um i think maybe you want to do that little bar before that goes um, um, just before the loud bit do that one super quiet and super staccato then when you play the forte you're not you don't have to break the sound you don't have to play it like uh, <laughs> you know you can you can play it loud and full just just mezzo forte is going to be enough only if you have um you understand what i mean so yeah. go from yeah go from there um, okay yeah. don't worry about this now but wh wh when you when you if you decided i want it staccato you would choose a good fingering and it would be for staccato would it be this four one three two three one uh, it's super easy to do the staccato your fingering it's not so easy you just have to stop strings and things so i think you should consider yeah. changing and then you know again because i knew stephen i just uh, he was a playful man he, he wasn't actually i wouldn't say he was he was a super funny man but he always had little you know, he always just said little things. So I, I'm thinking of him when he goes, you know, yeah, play around with it. If you go, it doesn't really mean anything if it's flat, right? Whereas if you have one accent and one staccato note and one super sweet, you know, it would be typical of, of his character, right? And I think typical of his music, right? So let, let's go on, right? Now, on many, many composers have a kind of, thumbprint or a fingerprint or something you know the the um like you know when you do brower you there's certain little phrase ah oh, that's got to be brower you know because he uses them all the time and they stevens is that's his fingerprint <laughs> okay well is it you know it, it, he uses that a lot you'll hear that so it's something that he enjoys as a kind of ending right so when you do that uh, -dum, -dum, uh, how does it go like? Uh, then this here it is. We need to do everything to make the dum sound special. It's like uh, I, I don't have bar numbers, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or ten bars in. Yeah. And you, you hear you hear it you hear it comes because it, it comes there. Have a go if you like first. Keep going, keep going, there's another one coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, okay, perfect. So it's the end, so it's the end. Uh, let, let's go forward, right, so we get as many things done. The, the part that goes like this, uh, that bit didn't come out very well in... Um, the, the triplet in that one there. Yeah, I think I need to change my fingering. This, I'm doing this. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't sound convincing. I, I I thought maybe I just didn't. You know, you when you make a video, sometimes you, how many times you're going to play it you know, to get it right. But I think I think uh, you need to find a way of making that more convincing. I would I have maybe slurred either two or 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 all of them. So, and they've come up to the, so, watch this, I'll show you, and they've gone up to the, right, so, so, um, you, you can watch it on the recording after if you like, but that fingering after, you climb up the third string, and then you're here, so on yeah let's move forward then right? because there's lots of lots of things to do so we talked about the, the durum which you did very well there anyway 
Now they're fine, they're fine. Oh, just the last card of this uh, of this division, this variation or whatever. You know the one that comes out? Can I, can I hear you? Can I hear you play the last couple of bars? Right. It's it's difficult to judge from here. So are, are you are you no it's okay. Are, are you taking out the D in, in the chord? No. Are oh, you playing the oh. four? See there is a D there. I mean the low D? No, no. Uh, you're playing or you're playing this one. Well, what notes are you playing? Oh, no, I'm be, not playing a D. There's no D in my score. It should be this. Right? Okay, okay it doesn't matter. I mean, it's okay. I mean, if you've decided for whatever reason that you don't like it. Then, uh, and then... So, no, I so um, right? that, that's what's written, right? that, but you know, on, on some guitars, that chord sounds out of tune and doesn't, doesn't ring well and things, you know, so, and I think when I played this, when I didn't have such a good guitar at that time, see, that's just basically the same note, right? Yeah. And uh, we're, we're, so everything is there, right? I mean, it's 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 a weaker chord, but if it's going to sound, you say it's a better chord, it's going to sound bad because either out of tune or your guitar doesn't ring well there. Uh, that that's the alternative. And the great thing is, you can the nice and you can make that last note super satisfying. It just, so consider it for for yours anyway. Let's let's go on to the next one. Da -da -da -dee -dum, da -da -da -dee -dum. Right. Um, the, the the second and third bar it's not sounding good, but it, try it again, just It's just um, when you have um, you have to do something to get that that A flat sound a bit better. It might just be the the, the system. Try it again. Okay, work work at it. Maybe try this. Try playing the A the A flat a little bit later. Right. So um, I, da -da -da -da, I have to and make do everything to make. Um, are, are you playing it with the thumb or not? Yeah. Okay. Make your best thumb note. <laughs> Okay, that was that was too wily, but <laughs> never mind. Let's go on. Let, let just just give it. Although the, although that one sounded you know it burst and clattered and whatever, but certainly we're attracted to it, or you you have to listen to it. So don't play it like it's just a one more note. You play it. Um, uh, yeah. So play it musically. That's a, that's what we do. So let's let's go on from there uh, uh, and on. Um, that little phrase, um, uh, um, can you be super charming or? Sort of like kind of manly charming with it, if you, if that means anything. <laughs> you, you understand what I mean? It's like it's it's kind of deep, but at the same time it's super warm and friendly. Okay. That, 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 
that was better. You you work at it, right? To to find your own way of, of making it. So, uh, and I think the chord should be a complement to another C sharp. See, so it goes. Uh, de -do, uh. And in the chord, make sure that the ear sticks on the C sharp, not. Um, no, it's a right. So it's a complemented C sharp. I think it's worth it doing it that. Let's go on from there. And so on. Sounding great, sounding great. You're doing fine. You know, so all those little uh, intervening passages go dee -ra -rum, dee -ra -rum, Those those have to be super musical. You're already doing it. So you know, all of the little um, uh, as 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 interesting as you can make them. You know, if you think of the it's it's very pure rhythm. It could almost be any note. You know, like he does. He just. It, you know, it's not so important the note; it's, it's the rhythm. But then, when when the melody comes, there, play around with that. Do do something, make it sound different. You know, there was one where you played down here that I would have moved up if possible. I think it was. Uh... That one there. I'm not sure if we can make that one sound full of body. One, two, three. Out oh, for me, it's four lines in. Um... Three, four, bar. Are you going to do that here? Or... Yeah, just find a way of maybe one slide. You know, sometimes one slide makes it feel more like this. Um, or so, so maybe just slide between the B flat and the C, and it would be like this. Uh... You understand what I mean? Just, just to it, looking for this balance in all of the playing. I'm looking for this uh, balance between aggression or um, yeah, whatever you want to call it, and some of that sweetness. Let's move forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, 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 there was one thing I'd marked down, but um, you know, it's a, there's an uncomfortable bar that goes um, something like that there. Yeah. Okay. I want you to work at joining the chord to it because yeah. all your rhythm just is lost in the last couple of beats. I'm not sure where, but. You know. That's, that's better. It, it wasn't absolutely clean, but rhythmically it was much tighter. And I think it's important that you don't lose. It might be that it's oddly difficult to, to get that to work well. Yeah. You know, for some, are you doing it thumb finger, finger thumb? Yeah, PI. Can, can I see? It? probably done the same yeah it's, it's kind of hard with the fingers it just doesn't really work yeah and they probably yeah practice it sometimes the other way around you know it's it's strange but you know to put put the strength on the finger see if it's any better it, yeah it might work you know yeah. that's fine we, we can go on we can go on now uh, what about the harmonics, you know? To the ending? Beautiful, fantastic. Okay. Just go 
little bit of, the, of this one. Most of it was beautiful, the slow, the slow one. Just do the from the beginning of it. This one, I, I didn't take any notes really hardly. It sounded fine when you played it, and uh, so you know, I don't feel it was in in your in your the the first video I saw. I don't know if it was different to the the one you we heard today, but um, I just wrote down. Wow, the first note was very long. I think you went, you know, and it was. I think it's better to be. So that the it's not out of time. Don't do rubato in that. Do rubato in the lines and things, which you did fine. You know, that's no problem. Shall we move forward to the next one? Sure. Beautiful. Let's just do a little little bit because I don't need to say very much to you, but just a little bit. It, it does sound like it's on the same level. It doesn't have that much sense of direction. Uh, I haven't played this, but... The, you know, it's... Da, 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 like, move forward and get a little bit of an, an accent on the... Uh, um, uh, da, 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 try to get to that note. Don't... Because when I heard you, it sounded a little bit like as the, all the same, you know. So you're not sure if the first note is... On the beat, off the beat, da -da 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 take us to the beat if you can. Have a go. There's there's a bit of delay now, so it's difficult for me to hear you exactly. But what what tends to happen is that what I'm hearing from from your playing and from the video, um, uh, where, where the notes are. This note, the first B, is too short. But that's the beat note. You understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Im imagine you slurred it. If you slurred it, that note would actually be longer. You understand what I mean? Yes. So, it, I think, are, are you doing that with three fingers? Yeah. You, yeah. So, the, these pattern fingerings, sometimes they have this problem in that uh, we, we don't, we don't give it the right shape because we did, we give it a hand shape rather than a musical shape. And what should really happen? It should be if, if but speed it up, right? So the first B is actually the longest note, and then the D. You know. So then we will speed it. Well, your your fingering is better, right? But you understand what I mean, right? So I think for so it's really good as it is because you play very fast and it's very clean, but I think for it to get better, it needs to be more directional. Yeah. You know, and the three notes before the da da dum are less important. So it's not da 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 It's da 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 You understand? Yeah. Okay. So let's move forward because I want to get to the end of it. And you know, this you played really really well. So. You know, I don't need to say things to you about it. Um, it, it, it was great. Just, just that idea, right? So let, let's move forward to the that stuff there. It sounds really good. I mean, this is the way. Just um, bar one, two, three, four, five. Bar six. Can you play bar six for us? Uh, it's the one that got. Yeah. On on 
from the the open the D E open, it's way too loud in comparison. It should be. Uh, You know, we're hearing, at least I hear from here, uh, after you do the uh, uh, and it sounds like, it's, you know, so this this guy, it, it's it's not coming out, it should be, although it's offbeat, uh, it's, the power is yeah. there, not, no power in those guys, right? So go from the, do the, do You know the bit that goes now, the big chords? Uh, uh, there. I w I, I'm hearing like a chord, and then these things do them, and then chord. But I think it should be... It's, it's, it's his, his uh, thumbprint guy. You see, it's do rum pi do rum pi do rum pi and not drum dum tink rum You understand what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it's almost yeah. like a slurt. It should be. Uh, I don't know how you finger it, but how you, how you solve it. But it should be. Not, not the other way. Okay. So yeah. let, let's go on. Let's let's go on because I know you'll fix that. It's easy once once you remember remember Stephen's thumbprint. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, position change right uh, I'll just tell you a little j just hide it um, I used to live in a violinist house in London right the, the, the my landlord was a, vi a wonderful violinist and he used to say he had this phrase he said I have public position changes and private position changes right this is a public one okay so everybody he, you use it here, uh, what the notes are, that's a private one. So I position change, but nobody knows. Okay, so don't don't stick the slide in. Next thing, I know you fix that easy. Just just listen for them. You know, most of the time it's really easy to fix. The other thing is when you do the the uh, what's it called? Okay, when you do the that there, it's it's got to finish with something. It can't just be and then stop. Yeah. So yeah. somehow. That after you do da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da dum, we need one that actually kind of feels like a beat, and it's it's going to be the beginning of the next bar, right? Have a go. Do the yeah. rasgado. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Sebastian, I think it's because the last one is um, you where well, you're done done it. What's the notes? Uh, Okay, because it's a it's a backwards one. Um, you know, it, it, I would prefer to, whatever rasgado you use. You know, so that and you know, you, you should have a beat in there as you go. What are these chords? Um, right. So, so because the way you're doing it, we we lose a sense of beat. Now you say, what does it really matter? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. But the the beat kind of gives gives things a sort of logic in that everybody in the audience, when you hit that last chord, 
they all hit it with you. <laughs> Whereas if, if you play out a beat, uh, some people will think it should be later than, you know, but if you go, you know, they, they can't miss that, you know, your gesture and everything. Okay, just a little bit more, a little bit, oh no, that's it. Hey, we've done it. <laughs> okay, that's got Stevens writing there on the end. <laughs> <laughs> you can see. I I don't I I can't read it. Ah uh, no, doesn't matter. It just says Stephen Dodgeson. <laughs> but he's and he said November '69, and he says, uh, "My fingerings for general guidance only." So he played guitar a bit, and so he's in some places he's suggested specifically certain things, you know, and he's written it in. And I, I don't actually have the published version, so I, I don't know what is there. Okay, let's stop on that then. Thank you very much. Well done.
I, I have lost. Where is where is Amir? <laughs> Everyone here? Anyone here? Can you see me? Oh yes, now I can. Okay. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Hello. Yes, thank you. Well done. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. That's a lot of work. Eh? Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, really, I found it beautiful and. Uh, all of the fugato thing is just stunning, all the, the toccata part, and it's wonderful. So I think the best thing is if we go from the beginning, and if there are little things, I try to help you with the different parts that I've marked down a couple of places, but um, I didn't have time to read it through because I only got your score today. Okay, yes. But uh, let, let's start from the beginning, and please. Tell, okay, sure. tell us beautiful as it is, but uh, let's see what we can do to make it better. Yes, sure. Okay, can I try? Um, so, so uh, you have your guitar tuned down. Is that what you're doing? Uh, no, actually, I don't think so. So, what are you playing? I'm sorry. What, what what notes are you playing in the beginning? I'm playing E, D sharp, E. Just yeah. this reason, though it's what's this one. Do your ones? Okay. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter today. Okay, it might be the case because I, I had to tune down for some other class, but uh, maybe it's just going down, I don't know what. You, you're, you're a tone flat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, let me check. I'm sorry. Uh, uh... Yeah, it... I mean, it's going to be. Low. Can you check with the microphone? Is it because of the microphone? No, 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 you, you, I think you're, I think maybe you can. Yeah, the... Hi there. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just checked his microphone really quick. How are you, David? Very good. Uh... What's he doing? Play, I mean, is this, is play, you, play, play the front. You know that? Okay. It should sound like this. Yours is sounding. Um, you're sounding lower. Doesn't, doesn't matter today. We'll, we'll deal with it. You okay. just you just play, right? So okay. let's do let's do right from the beginning. Right? You just play. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean. So uh, what concerns me is that do do you need to play an apoyando on that bass note when you go? Let, wait one moment. Give me give me your open D. Open uh, I just want to say this is a problem of the microphone, I think, because I'm not that low. Okay, now we're together, more or less. Okay. Okay, so... Um, this note, it doesn't need to be apoyando. Uh, yeah, because it, it, because it's it's too big. Your sounds and it dominates. The bass is too strong. Sometimes there are some parts that you want to 
make it important and some parts less important, right? And so we have... It's just that you, you're bringing out some notes. Uh, no, it's up here there. Uh, go from the beginning again. Praise to, praise to the end. Watch this. Um, to that E there. Praise to it. Um, Crazies, right? Okay. Yes. Go. You mean I'm uh, I'm kind of fading at the end of the line? Is that I, I what's happening? Like when I hear you, it's you know when 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 someone speaks, there's a kind of natural moment to stop, and then we continue. Like with even if even if the beat continues, we still know when one phrase of our sentence, one yeah. phrase has finished and the next one starts. I don't get enough of that feeling. Okay. Just phrase to there, to, to bar two, and just let it relax in there. Um, give, give me each, each phrase. And let, let it come. It's not really stopping, it's just that I want to feel the difference. Okay. Because when you played, it sounded like this. Bar two sounded like. But I want it. Let, let the G become satisfactory. You, you do it. Okay. Okay, wait, stop a sec. <laughs> Give me your E. <laughs> okay, off you go. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> forget, forget what we did just now, because... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not... Sure, if I understand it, but I'll try to phrase it to the second measure. Great. It's it's getting better, but still, uh, imagine that the note that finishes one phrase, imagine it rings over a little bit. So when you come to the G, let it ring. I'm, I'm on low battery, damn thing. Okay. Uh, see, and not, don't make the, the, this one confused with this one. Okay. Is that possible? Okay, so it, it's also a little of my fingering that sometimes it happens, but... Uh... You know, I mean, I mean uh, on the guitar, many times we can't let it ring over, right? Yeah. So we have to kind of do little tricks to try and hide the fact that it, yeah. that it doesn't. Okay. Let's see what you can do. understood yeah um, so the idea really is that after the, let that one kind of just relax at the end each time that phrase comes which you know is there like five of them that that's all really just just to make so the shape I have a question about the phrase is the phrase does the phrase end at that G for example on this the G on the downbeat of second measure or it ends on E after ba 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 it ends where you want to. It, what, what I would like is that 
You give me what you feel. See, if they joined together, I would have gone to the G. See, the, the do 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 dum is actually, this is another person. You know, this is... And then... We're done really with it. Okay, I'll try. Let's move forward, Amir, because and I, I think I think you could. It's really just to uh, don't be rhythmic here. You want to be really just like someone talking, okay. making making the shapes. That's all. You, you already did it, but for me, the the strong bass hurt the whole piece. Uh, the the, um, the apoyando bass really. Okay. Yeah. Let's go on to the next section that goes, um, all that stuff there, bar, there. Okay, now when you have to do it on one string, um, and we are tuned now. You know when you have to go. Sometimes you have you have no choice. You could do, but you'd lose something else. Can we can we make it sound not? It's too solid. If you go do do do, we it doesn't sound similar to the. And what you think when you do this? The second note, the this one, is really quite gentle. So. Uh, Solid, but yeah. okay, yeah. I'll try to make it sound like, Place uh, uh, maybe and the, the one that goes bar two or three. That's a, um, you know, I'm not sure, but it, it feels like it could have one or two. Okay. That, that would just it's just like a touch of salt, and you know, if, if, if there's too much, it won't be good. Okay. But, and I think really for this piece, I think it needs to be on two strings. Mm -hmm. Really short, and especially lower mordants, you know, this, this, uh, sorry, that kind. Okay. So it's just a tiny little compliment. You know, we're always looking for ways to make our Baroque music feel as strongly Baroque as possible. And that kind of ornament, Giuliani never did it. <laughs> So it, it, it really pushes it into a whole period and it stops our playing sound like it could have been later, really. Yeah. That's why I, I would like to always include a few. Just It's just like the spice that will add to it, yeah? Okay. So let's, let's just, I, no, just for, for example, just one. On measure three, I put it on, if I want to add a measure three, I add it on C. Well, uh, measure three. I would have probably added it sometimes on the one that is the end of the phrase. Okay. Um, we'll see, yes. Um, um, so it would be there. You wouldn't have to put it all the time, but just one or two. If it causes too big a problem, in the sense that you have to do a fingering that's uncomfortable, you get diminishing returns, so it may, might not be worth it. Yeah. But if it's in a really easy place, it's it's worth putting them in. Yeah. Okay. 
Here we go. All to the to that stuff. Next bit. Next movement. Yeah. <laughs> ideas as, as you were playing it you know really nice but you know when Bach uses that theme that goes da 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 you know the, 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 the little da 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 I wonder if it's necessary to have two accents see what, what we hear is uh, it sounds like A G A you know, the, uh, I think the first A either no accent or no accent on the second Okay, so it's either either that, so I'm playing on the first, or um, so we play quiet, quiet, strong, but never, never too strong. Yeah. If, well, never. This is, you know, we're making up rules, but it would be better. It's going to sound uh, less, less stodgy. Yeah. If you don't go da da dum, you know the famous. If someone who plays and goes doesn't sound good, you know it's either either is yeah. So or one or the other, okay. right? And sometimes even maybe start with one and maybe somewhere else you do it the other way, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think at the beginning you want it to sound lighter, not. Not uh, like stodgy heavy. Here we go. See, see what happens. Mm -hmm. oh, I did. Okay. After that, be lighter. Don't go. Not a new accent there. It's a that's going to be. Yeah. Do it, start from the beginning again. I mean, so that we can see if we can. I'm, I'm not sure because I can't really read this well enough. But uh, see, it might be it might be the 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 accent. It might actually be that you know the thing of when, when we are. A little bit late on the last one. Uh, so we go one, two, one. That sounds extra heavy. It's, it's almost better to err on the other side of starting the AGA a microsecond late and let it float. Uh, see, so I'm. I'm you understand what, yes. what I'm doing? Yes. So, I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to, to really, because it's really a very, very small amount, mm -hmm. but that will make it fall forward rather than sit on its heels. Yes. Have a go, see what happens. Ask you, go, you can go from the top, it's okay, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes we have to overdo it to understand it, and then eventually, eventually it will just become a tiny, almost nothing, right? Go, for, go from the high thing there, the high note, where it is a bit that stuff there. Okay, try this, try this. After the first half of the bar, Take out the, the second accent. De -de -dum. Take out that accent. Go da da da. Strong, weak. Strong, strong, and then weak. So, um. Okay. And not. Right? Okay. 
practice it. And then, then you play it up to speed. Just, just reducing it. I mean, that was a little exaggerated, but practice that because our hands, when we go into a new position, we almost want to play louder. And then you've got a bass note coming in as well, or another, another chord or whatever. All of that emphasizes that, 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 that jump, that second note. And I would say that it's, it's going to float easier if that is not so strong. Now, there may be some places in the fugue that you actually want to be heavy. And you use it, of course. Yes. Can we go on from there? Go from um, that bar. here is, is when this note comes on that on the third line the, the C is is louder than your D see I want I'm not okay but I'm not yes I understand it happens it happens all over the all over this movement I mean it's yeah, it's, the, yeah. The, it's, it's okay if it happens sometimes, but uh, okay. I'll try. We'll, 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 I'd like to find one that we can get rid of and see if it's worth it for you. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's do it on that one. Um, that down. So play the G sharp. Uh, okay. So I play the first D strong and the second. Just, just by basically, I mean, basically all the same. No, I want to get rid of the accents. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And what you're doing is, uh, so it kind of it falls. You know, you want to play it on your toes, not on your heels. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Boom! That's it's, it's too strong. So you okay. need to find a way of of lightening it up and making the notes sound more similar. It doesn't mean that we don't have any accents. No, we. You put them in, but we decide, not when our hand does it for us. Yes. Okay. If possible. Practicing, kind of thinking of this, I think I think it will be it'll float more. So everything becomes more transparent when it doesn't have the accents jumping in. And then you decide some places to be stronger. That's fine. Yeah. We need to talk about those two little trills. The first one was in bar two or three or somewhere, and this one that you just did just now. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was there or. Yes, it was there. I it's not in the score. I I just do it. could you play it for me just so I understand what you're doing. Uh, Line three, for example. Uh, I can't find it, but um. So it's it's uh, the last line, uh, at the end of it. Uh, Yeah, okay, the, yeah, the beginning of the last line. Okay, could you do it once more now? I can follow you. I do it, I do it again? Please. Okay. Uh... Okay. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, it's a good place, and, I've, and I, I, I agree that it should... Uh, uh, but, um... You know, if the trill is actually going to be uh, not better, it would maybe be better to do another kind of ornament. You know, just just go. You, you know, just consider it because go go to the other one in bar two and see because that's a really easy one, I think. Yeah. Can you play bar two? Uh, 
It really it adds to the piece. The other one here, it sort of sort of sounds weak. So I'm not sure if, if it's you know if it, if it's not better with it in, it's better to chuck it out. Yes. You know, or find another way of doing it. You know, sometimes we say, well, you know, I really need the trill, and then so well, do we lose a bass to do it? Or the, a bad trill hurts. Yeah. Right. Let's go on a little bit. Let's let's jump forward to the the intervening passage. The um... let's want to get on to the to the last bit a little bit if possible. Something, one, one group of notes takes you to a place, and the other group of notes does something in the place. From here, at least, I'm not hearing any difference between... It, it's all of this... Uh, it's, it's fill up. It doesn't need to be played in, with the same intention. So... And when you get... And this... This some, somehow has to sound secondary and not this stuff. It should complement the D, you know, whatever, whatever it is, right? Yeah. So uh, at least from here, I'm not hearing much difference. Could you play play bar two? Uh, the way. See, so that the audience's ear enjoys the full D, yeah. which then carries on, in, you know, he carries on from there. Whereas if, if the way you play, if this distracts us, then we're, we're, we're gone down to these notes and then there's some new notes coming that don't come from anywhere, yeah. right? So think in terms of which note you want to leave your audience with, right? And through the hearts of God, um, they all sound the same. Yeah, but they can leave some ringing and not the other ones, you know? And so they can, they can make balance out of, they, they make harmony by which notes are left on and which are not. Sometimes we can't because, I mean, this, we can't, I mean, you could, you, you could have found a way of doing it, but um, it should all ring together there. So we can't, so we have to play it in such a way that the audience stays with that note. Right. So that that was really all. Just most of it was really good, and you know I enjoyed the way you play it. And we'll go from that bar line three. You know. Um, that's yeah. When you leave the B, it sounds uh, it sounds weird. That the ending sounds unusual. I don't really, I don't know what you're saying. I I don't do because it's actually a D down an octave uh, okay. for piano, but I do I do this. Yeah. And maybe you know uh, Yeah. Maybe double the double the B as well then, because it's too 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 much D sound. Yeah. So, so although although it's not what the what the original does, if, if it goes down to the bottom, it, it still has to create the, the B minor sound at, at the end of the of the scale. 
I, mean, I, thought, I thought you'd made a mistake because it didn't sound right. Yeah. So obviously you did make a mistake, but it it's not convincing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let's let's jump forward. Most of this I enjoyed. It was fine. So let's go to the the fuga. <laughs> staccatos or the, the articulation you know they're really nice and uh, I would have exaggerated them a little bit and then use it when you're in the next bit uh, so it, uh, and decide if you're going to do it on the third one or the second one or which, which when are you going to start the staccato okay but go from the beginning again and I think it should be straight, uh, long, short, short, short. I think do pop pop is best. That one you have to do with the left hand. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to do the right hand one. That is a hard one, but yeah. It, but it, it's going to sound better when you use more of those staccatos. You know, articulation can also save your life at moments because sometimes when something is super difficult, if you play a staccato, it's not, it doesn't sound dirty. You know, we can make it cleaner. So really, if you introduce staccatos into your... Uh, into your way of playing right from the beginning. When they come out later, simply because it's, super, it's too much of a struggle, they all make sense, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let, let's go on from there. How, how about from uh, the third line, for example? <laughs> really great you know so I'd like to jump forward a little bit because to, to some of those places that sound like you're struggling and see if I can help you yeah. to h hide the struggle <laughs> uh, in, in the second one you know the, uh, the line three yes yes go, go from the I'll play all of line three uh, Second edge, right? Second edge. Okay, line three. Uh, here. Ah, uh, here. This far? Yeah, it's a different. Well, let, let's move forward because uh, we have to, uh, the bottom of that page. The bottom of the page. Okay. Uh, it's the last two lines. It should sound like Sounds like you're struggling, right? It's, you know, it's, uh, that several thing when when you play a note with a fat sound, uh, it buzzes easier, and when you play a note loud, it buzzes easier, right? Uh, so if you can play with 
much straighter to the string. I don't know, I can't really judge your sound, you know. But you can actually, buy, if you do this with a big fat sound, it'll buzz more than if you do it like this. Okay. Even if you're holding it the same. So if you pluck more outwards, um, there's no way. Uh, out. I'm not playing. This is my normal sound. I don't know if you tell the difference, but I play through the string. But these notes, um, um, if I don't hold it right, they buzz much more than these notes. Right, so play, I also play a little quieter. So go, go to that place that we started at. that are not convincing, right? The, the first little arpeggio there, one line back. Uh, okay. Oh, on the second, one line back. What are you doing there? Oh, I do this. Okay. Yeah. C consider, consider it, you know, I know we're supposed to play all the notes that Bach wrote, but if you can find a way um, to, to play it, um, to, to where it doesn't sound like you messed up. It should never sound like a mistake. And the other one that's not working, that's not convincing, is that next bar. I think it's the, the uh, those extra notes in the middle. Yeah, okay. Play that bar for me. Uh, that, those yeah. ones. Yeah. Faster, the, the tempo. Yeah, they, but they don't they don't really come out. They're not convincing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how we can change it, but uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really neat to have to have that in, in the middle there. But if it's not going to work, I think you should simplify it and don't only play one of the two notes. And you know, it's uh, it's it's got to work for us, and it's got to work for your fingers. And it's, if it's not being convincing, in some ways. When the audience listen to it, they say, yeah, what was that? You know? Yeah. So I would, I would consider, I mean, on all transcriptions, you end up doing your own thing to make it fit you. Yeah. Right? And you know, Bach, Bach changed his own pieces when he moved it from one instrument to the other. So I think, you know, we, it's okay to take one note out or yes. one you know, a couple of notes, of either that middle voice or whatever. If you really like, um, uh, or I can't see what note it is. Uh, it's in the middle there. If you really like that, maybe this stuff here is less important if you want it. So reduce the top part okay. so that we can get that. You know, which is really neat. But it's not coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> great. Um, I'd love to keep, we could keep on going, keep on going, because there's so many little details that we're not even beginning to look at. But it's, it's great. I mean, your fingers work really well. I, think. I, I feel that the bit that uh, I, I 
didn't feel convinced enough, or I, I think you can do a lot better, is the fugue itself, right? Okay. And I think partly because of these, the way you're using the accent, and maybe, maybe some, some articulation to help. Uh, for example, if you wanted an accent, instead of going and just playing the second note loud, see, but by cutting, you make a, an elegant accent. Whereas when you play it simply loud, uh, uh, say it's got another note with it, uh, and you, you hear the difference. So try using that rather than using the, the accent itself and reduce them. Uh, hopefully that will help. Yes, yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful playing. Well done. Thank you very much. David, I'm back now, and I just yeah. want to thank you for your great generosity. Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Air for these students. I think they're pretty good, eh? They're wonderful, amazing. Yeah, I think Not so. Fantastic. Just, and I, I've enjoyed all the pieces, you know, it's a, a few completely new pieces for me, the Scalati and the Bach and things, and, you know, and the other ones are like old favorites. And it seemed like it was fun for you to get back to the Dodson. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I haven't played any of his music for a long time, but uh, and I, I, I tell all your students about the second partita because it's really beautiful. I did it. I did it on a BBC program a long time ago, and it's got some really lovely middle bits and things. And some of his music is is kind of forgotten a little bit. It's a pity because I think he was he was great, really. Yeah. And there's some real harmonic richness in that second partita. Absolutely, yeah. And and also he uses, he uses the instrument in a big way, which I always like. Yeah. And so we we promised to uh, we promised people. A few more questions, and there have been a number of questions. We've gone so long that I just want to give you a few general ones. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's great. A lot of fun. Um, you know, I've been confined at home for six weeks now, so yeah. this, is, this is my only work. Yeah. Um, so someone asks you, which musicians have inspired you the most in your life? Um, well, I have to start with Andres Segovia, because it, my father had this wonderful collection well now they're all disappeared but of old 70 rpm records and that's what we heard at home and my father loved guitar and things and so hearing segovia was really the reason why i played guitar but then later on uh, i lived in london and i lived in this violinist house manny hurwitz emmanuel hurwitz he was a fantastic violinist leader of the english chamber orchestra and of the philharmonia of london and things so i heard all these amazing players the, the Mellows Ensemble, was, he was the violinist of that. And so all these people were coming through the house and things. And that I was way too young to really appreciate what I was getting. <laughs> but they, they were completely inspiring. And so that those are unknown people in certain sense, not super famous. But they also made me listen to all the great pianists and violinists and things. And, and then, of course, John Williams and Julian Bream, because I lived in London at that time. They were super active and... So that's it. Yeah, great. Um, another question. What important habits should young classical guitarists consider in their daily practice to enhance technique and interpretation? That's kind of a big question. Yeah, well, okay, it's, there's an easy answer. It's good habits. Very <laughs> true. But, you know, so when you practice, um, when, when I practice in the morning, say, I usually spend sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes I go on for longer and sometimes I warm up because as you get older and things, you really want to take care of your fingers. So a good warm up is so that you don't suddenly strain or whatever. And in the warm up, I try to create good habits. And so the way I think that my fingers work best, you have to go over it every day and not just, ah, oh, this is going to work, you know, or just how your left hand goes. I mean, a good habit would be I mean, a very simple one is just, if, if you imagine, you just start by doing this. So that th the three is going down exactly in the right place. Many, many times. And the four, well, that's creating a good habit. You go to bed, you go to sleep, and your hand is like this shape, and you go doink, and it's... And eventually, you can't miss. Of course you can miss, but you feel that hand knows exactly where to put your finger. I'm, I'm sure I've told the story of it, but uh, you have to think it like this. When you're a baby, and they give you this mush to eat, and you go, 
used to get in your mouth. Oh, there's my mouth. And then eventually you never miss your mouth. You know, I mean, can you imagine missing your mouth? Maybe, maybe later in life. <laughs> but basically, my mouth is there and I don't need to look at it. That's because we get, ah, this is good. It feels good. But, well, this should be the same. You know, so when we go, it should feel good and that should feel bad. So every time you do it wrong, you've given yourself bad information. And every time you've done it right, you've confirmed your good habits. Yeah. So. Habits are so powerful. I think you miss your mouth in the beginning and you miss it at the end and in the middle if you've been drinking too much. Otherwise, you hit it. Well, do it Do it with your coffee in the morning, you know, every day with breakfast. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. 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 So maybe just one more. Um, someone asks, what is your idea about playing very piano? How to get complete control? How to maintain a beautiful sound? I think each of us have a kind of uh, how heavy or how light our hand is. And, you know, um, some players play absolutely beautifully when they play quietly. And other players, you can see that they're kind of like, kind of as if they're holding their breath. Just just like singers and, you know, and some people have super soft hands. You know, you can hear them on the piano or you hear them. And some people don't. So I think you have to find your own best range, really, and expand it as much as possible. So, you know, if you're super quietly, you need to expand your volume. And if you're a heavy, loud player, you need to expand towards the quiet end. You know, because on the guitar, we don't have very much volume. So you only are as loud as you are quiet. <laughs> or the other way around, you're only as quiet as your loudest note. So really having, uh, having that as wide a range as possible in your volume I think is a huge, a huge advantage. Yeah. So those people who can't play very loud, maybe need to improve it. But on the guitar, some people, they play loud, but it's really ugly. So it'd be better if they played quiet, you know? So play loud and ugly is no good. You've got to be able to play loud and maintain your quality, and then also play quiet and maintain your quality. But I will say one thing in that when you play, as you play quieter and quieter, it's better for your sound to actually get thinner. You know, because if you if you play medium volume and you play with a fairly round sound, when that gets quiet, eventually it just falls flat in a concert hall anyway. Or in, in a close situation, it sounds beautiful to play round and super quiet. But in a concert hall, when you go quiet, it's better to get a bit... to, to go for that slightly fruity, fruity, skinny sound up here and those kind of notes they go to the back of the hall and remain quiet but they reach the back whereas the fat one it, it tends to fall in the first couple of rows so I, I feel that some people who have a beautiful thin sound often sound absolutely magical when they play quiet and not so great when they play loud and the people who have big fat sound they're fine when they're playing medium upwards and on the, on the short end sometimes it's it's too muffled you like so then we come to think we need to be able to uh, change the angle there's I would say there's several angles angles there's from this one to this one right but there's also from low wrist to high wrist the high wrist you pull outwards more and it, it, it's a different quality of sound and it actually sounds really very nice if, it, if it's used well you know um, so expand the range yeah. we are always students of this thing aren't we yeah and john mclaughlin the great john mclaughlin has been posting these wonderful videos during this recent time saying this is an opportunity for guitarists to work on their playing and here is a legend and a great master and he's showing the things he's working on every day great fantastic yeah so david let, let's end there and, and i just give you so many thanks for your generosity and your great wisdom here um, let me thank also these wonderful students who, who sound so great. Um, again, the engineers, Kelly Coyne and uh, Jason O'Connell for production, Hank Mao and Andrew Ross, and for support, Harry Winston. Everybody out there, please practice hard and stay safe and healthy. This is David and, from the San Francisco Conservatory. Thank you, David. One more word. And continue to enjoy it as much as you do up to now. <laughs> <laughs>